Oh, how things can change in a week. Last week, the Giants had one of their best wins in years against the Seahawks. And really, that was the peak. Because the next day, Washington beats Pittsburgh. And let's just say Washington lost that game. The Giants would have been in a very good position. They would have been a game up with the tiebreaker. That doesn't go their way. And then this week, it was basically a worst-case scenario where Daniel Jones clearly was nowhere near 100%, which I suspected. I figured he wasn't going to be able to run. He wasn't able to run. But definitely doesn't provide confidence moving forward. And the Giants got steamrolled by Arizona, who was a desperate football team who had only won the Hale Murray game in their past four or five games. So they were due for a win. And they came out strong and did what they need to do. And to make matters worse, every other team in the division won. Most specifically, Washington beating San Francisco. And so now the Giants are a game behind Washington with a tougher schedule and with a quarterback who is clearly still hurt. And the offense looked horrible. There's just not, nothing else to say. They could not move the ball. Arizona had eight sacks. And you just knew that Marcus Golden was going to make a big impact. And he did. To be honest, the play that I think about the most was Jones just getting absolutely punished by Marcus Golden. Fumble. It actually led to a situation where the Giants did hold the Cardinals. It was a very great defensive stand. But the Giants never had good field position. Their special teams have been awful in the last three games. And that's somewhat inexcusable. Joe Judge's background is special teams. And they were great the first 10 games, but the last three, horrendous. So the defense did what it could. They ran out of gas. It wasn't really a great performance by them, but it wasn't their fault. They were down 13-0 going to halftime, and you knew it was over. And so now what happens with Daniel Jones? It seems like he's probably going to play, but a huge part of his game is running. And if he can't do that, we're very easy to, to defend. We don't have the explosiveness at the wide receiver position to get any type of separation. And while the offensive line has improved, especially in the run game, this week was certainly a problem. But also, Daniel Jones can't move out of the—he can't move. He stays in the pocket. So hopefully he really improves health-wise because I don't know how much of a chance you have if he's playing. Not that I want Colt McCoy to be the quarterback. I don't think he's the answer. But— I, I, it's concerning and it's too bad because the Giants got flexed to Sunday night against Cleveland and we'll get into the Browns versus the Ravens, which is one of the best games of the year. But now everyone can see what could be a potential mess for the Giants. I think the defense certainly can hold them in it and it can't be this bad offensively, but I'm not feeling great about this team and where it's headed for the rest of the season. Like I said, an amazing turn where they win with Colt McCoy at Seattle. And then, boom, fast forward a week where it was looking like them winning division was looking solid. And now, not at all. Not at all. Uh, this And against Cleveland, make no mistake about it, this is a must-win game. They have to win this game. If they lose, it's done. Absolutely done. And... I potentially as early as the Raven game. I hope not. I hope not, but I might be back into rooting for them to lose, hoping they go 5-11, and 11, get a good draft pick, which they actually still can, believe it or not. Just with, you have your top three kind of set up with the, Jet, the Jets, the Jaguars, and the Bengals. And then below that, it's a slew of teams with four and five wins, and the Giants have a really bad strength of schedule. So a top five pick is actually in play. And I'll say this, I think there's a better chance that the Giants will lose out than win out. And with that, they might finish less in the division. So you, you don't want to get too carried away, but it's hard to be optimistic, just specifically with Jones's health. I think that's going to be a problem. But I know this giant team, they will find a way to disappoint me in the biggest way. Here's what's going to happen. I can already see it. They're going to lose the next two to 
put themselves out of the playoff mix. They will be 5-10. and 10. Leading into a game against Dallas, there may or may not be talks about, well, maybe Dave Gettleman loses his job, which, as much as I was giving him credit for his offseason moves, I hope he goes. That could be the one good byproduct here. But the Giants will be 5-10, and 10, playing a meaningless game against Dallas, and they will win. They will win. They will finish 6-10. and 10, Middling draft position. Dave Gettleman returns. And there you go. Because we already saw last year that Chase Young ball has even taken on greater significance than I even imagined then. I was livid then when the Giants won that overtime against Washington. And now we see Chase Young as a rookie doing special things for this Washington football team. And it was one thing to not get the second pick and lose him, but unfortunately you lost him and he's in your division now. It's not like he was going to the Lions or some random team like the Broncos or, you know, the Raiders or something. He's in your division now for likely at least the next decade. So, and to make matters worse, Andrew Thomas, who was improving, did not have a great week this week. So, all the positives from last week, and you can't lose sight of it, and it is a process. Look, the Giants wouldn't even be in the playoff discussion if not for being in a terrible division. Let's just make that totally clear. But their faults and their deficiencies were made very clear in this Arizona game. And it'll be very interesting to see how they respond against Cleveland, who just lost a heartbreaker against Baltimore. I was rooting for Cleveland. I think for the Giants, it would have been better for Cleveland to come in off that win, be 10-3, and three, and be in a really good position. You know, they basically would be a near lock to make the playoffs. They play the Jets the week after. They would have been totally fine. To now, they really need to win this game. And I just, I like playing teams off of wins more than losses. I'm not sure what the statistical data, if it would, what that would show. But it's not a huge deal, but I don't think it helps us. And Lamar Jackson was actually hurt. And Trace McSorley comes in and it's looking like Cleveland might win this game. So I think it would have actually been the perfect combination too. Like a false sense of hope for Cleveland when winning against basically their backup. But McSorley gets hurt, and here comes Lamar Jackson out of the locker room, and he saves them, and Baltimore gets the win. And it was weird, because if McSorley didn't, didn't get hurt, Lamar was never coming in, which was very odd to me. Like, clearly he was good enough to play, and that was further proven by how he performed. So why was he not in? Only in an emergency situation. Strange, but here nor there. So, now Washington is in the driver's seat. They play Seattle next week. And I hope Seattle can win the game, but Washington's defense is very solid. Their quarterback situation is a question mark. Alex Smith got hurt, and Dwayne Haskins had to come in. I think that Smith, from a morale perspective and just smarter football is better for Washington. But, like... I watch Alex Smith, and I don't think he's anything amazing. So Haskins is very much a wild card. He could make a lot of mistakes, but I also think that he could open some things up. So it shouldn't change the outlook of that game too much. But I'm sure if you're a Washington fan, you'd prefer Alex Smith because you've been winning with him. So that's something to monitor. Another big development in the NFC East is the fact that the Eagles won against the Saints with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. So they needed to get you know, be done with Carson Wentz, at least for the season. They did that, and Hurts provided provided a spark. He ran for over 100 yards. Miles Sanders looked great. And I think that the frustrating thing is New Orleans, if Taysom Hill was not their quarterback, New Orleans could have easily won that game. I don't, I mean, Sean Payton, he's got to stop with his Taysom Hill shit. Uh, and we'll see what they do. They have a big game against the Chiefs next week. Will Drew Brees be back? It's up in the air, but... Certainly sounds like he'll be back at some point, which will really help their chances because they're not going to win a Super Bowl with Taysom Hill quarterback. So I kind of knew that, that would come back to bite, and it did. So now the Eagles 
are actually in this division race. This is a really big game against Arizona coming up. Coming up. So if they win another, so the Giants are only a half game ahead of the Eagles. If the Eagles win, the Giants are in a really tough spot because the Eagles play Washington the last week of the season. So if the Giants are behind both teams going in, obviously they're locked out. They're totally done. So that's a game to definitely keep your eye on. So chronologically, Seattle Washington's at one. So I think right there that's huge. If Washington beats Seattle right right then and there, my hope is pretty much completely dashed. Even if the Giants beat Cleveland, we're in big trouble. So let's say Seattle beats Washington. That's good. And then at four twenty-five or four o'clock, Eagles versus the Cardinals. So that will be big. So the Giants hope to get the results they need heading into the Sunday night game. And forgetting about the Eagles for a second here, even though, like I said, that is important, the Giants winning is paramount. And Washington losing as well. It needs to be both. It can't be one or the other. We have to be tied going into the second to last week of the season. Because even then it's difficult. Because then Washington's home against Carolina and the Giants are at Baltimore. So you have to kind of think that they might lose a game there. Really the hope now is to just stay alive going into the last week. Whereas going into this previous week, I was hoping find a way to have it be a win and in situation as Dallas. Now my thoughts have changed and I think you just have to be hopeful that they're a game back and basically we need Philly to knock off Washington. How interesting would that be? Giants fans rooting for the Eagles and they probably let them down. It never really works out when it comes to the Eagles. So, but we'll get there when we get there. But here it is again. This division just changes by the week. And, yeah, not so good in giant land currently. So, as I discussed, Ravens-Browns, what a game. Big win for the Ravens. And I think that they will make the playoffs. This was a really big game for them. Now they play Jacksonville, the Giants, and the Bengals. They will be in. I feel very certain about that. They are not – their defense is really questionable these days and – it was a good performance from Lamar tonight, but they, if they're losing, that's still an issue. Baltimore was basically winning this whole game. So I think if they were in really crazy comeback mode, that would have been tough. If you can really, if you can basically stop Lamar from knowing that Lamar running is basically out of the equation, changes the whole outlook. But a huge win for Baltimore. Cleveland, because they play with the Jets after the Giants, Cleveland will get in, although it is Cleveland, but Mayfield looked good. Uh, you know, like I said, more just hurts from a giant perspective that I wish that Cleveland had won. So the Steelers now, wow, they look terrible. Offensively, they have nothing. They can't run. Their means of offense is basically Roethlisberger throwing short passes to guys that can't even catch the ball. Deontay Johnson, who's arguably been their most consistent receiver all season, he's, he got benched. And... Yeah, they got nothing going on. Claypool, they can't even really find... Roethlisberger, it's just... He's basically like a better version of Alex Smith right now. It's it's a joke. So, that's a team I'd want to play. Sure, it's a good defense still. Look at Josh Allen had no, problem, had no problem carving them up. So, yeah, I'm down on the Steelers right now. And Kansas City, you know, they overtook the, the number one spot. And they'll probably stay there. And even and even Kansas City actually really, when you think about it, they have some things to work on, but you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. With Mahomes, they won the Super Bowl last year. They will be the team to beat in the AFC. But where I was, I was so sure that it was going to be Chiefs Steelers, and maybe it still will be, but I certainly am backing out backing off of that now. The Bills look good. They look good. Obviously, it's been a long, long time since they've won a playoff game. Really long time. So we'll have to see it to believe it. But that Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, they're a really, really good offensive team. Which I I wouldn't have expected it like to this degree, and they don't really have much of a running game. I think really Josh Allen to me, he's their most dangerous runner, more so than like Devin Singletary or Zach Moss. But Stephon Diggs has done wonders for that team. They, they've really they've surprised you by how good they've been. 
And I, the Bills, to me, were more predicated on their defense, but they seem to be definitely more of an offensive club. So the Bills should hold off the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, I think, they might be the team that is the odd man out. They do, only because I think the Ravens are going to make a big push here with their easy schedule. And then I guess what it could come down to is the loser of the AFC South, like the second team in that division versus the Dolphins. But this week you saw good wins. You know, Titans taking care of business against the Jaguars and the Colts winning at the Raiders, who I think they will not make it. You can count the, the Raiders out. All I needed to see was that Jet game to know this team is not, you know, they're decent, they're average, I guess you could say, but they're not playoff worthy. So I think it will probably come down. I think the Dolphins are just going to fall short. The remaining three games are the Patriots, which will be close but winnable, Raiders, which will be close but winnable, and then the Bills. And by then, the Bills are not, may not be playing for something. So it's funny. You have seven teams making the playoffs in the AFC, but yet very likely you're going to have a 10-win team that may not make the playoffs. Um, there, yeah, there's going to be one team. because I, like, I think New England is done at this point. And like I said, the Raiders. So Colts-Titans, I think that the loser still gets in over the Dolphins. The Jonathan Taylor is back as a really big piece in that offense. And T.Y. Hilton, turning back the clock, he looked toast for the first 10 or 11 weeks of the season. And now, all of a sudden, him and Phillip Rivers are looking great together. So, it's kind of one of those Jekyll and Hyde type teams, just like the Titans are. But I think I see enough good from both of them. I don't know who's going to win the division. It's a complete toss-up. But I think as for either team, as long as they get in, that's really all they care about. Sure, you'd like to have the home game, but with no fans anyway, what's the, you know, no big deal there. And in terms of some of the dregs of the AFC, a.k.a. the Trevor Lawrence Bowl, or, you know, how with the Bengals, they seem pretty locked into the three spot. Certainly no, they're, I mean... They lost easily to the Cowboys. So we know the top three teams. We just don't know the order. The Jaguars got crushed by the Titans. And Gardner Minshew replaced Mike Lennon. And Gardner Minshew probably does give them their best chance to win. Mike Lennon, to me, Mike Lennon coming in, that was almost about as obvious as a tank job as you'll find. He's a journeyman. At least with Jake Luton, at least he's a sixth round pick. You can evaluate him. To me, Mike Lennon was like, Yeah, we're we don't mind losing. That's what that signaled to me. But now Gardner Minshew seems like he'll be back in there. And the Jets just got absolutely annihilated. They might go down as one of we'll have to see what these last three games hold, but they might go down as one of the worst, if not the worst, team in NFL history. They did have a couple of really close games, but they also get cry. I mean, their point differential is like minus over minus two hundred. I mean, just not competitive at all. And they have Trevor Lawrence will help. They have a lot to clean up, even beyond that. So much so. I mean, who are they going to hire as their new head coach? And there's just so much to fix there. It's ugly. So the Rams will kill them, and then. They play the Browns and the Patriots. So I think they'll lose those games as well. Maybe, and not because the not because of any sort of like Bill Belichick, like intentional plan to lose, but maybe they play that game straight up and, and an uh, eliminated New England team. Maybe there's not so much motivation. Um, that would be the one game where maybe they could win, but it's the Jets. Let's be real. They're, they're not going to win. So moving to the NFC. The Packers have now overtaken the Saints. And, you know, it deservedly so. This Taysom Hill, like, Taysom Hill wins two games against the Falcons. And he beats a team that didn't have a quarterback. That Denver game, we may as well not even, like, when I evaluate, like, the Broncos, just as an example, I don't hold that against them at all. Like, the Broncos are playing very good football. 
the last they beat Miami and they almost won at Kansas City and then they beat Carolina. So Taysom Hill, he's been okay. He's actually been better than I thought he would be, but you pull that crap and don't use a real quarterback, well, yeah, now you might not get a bye. And now you play Kansas City. So, yeah, I think Green Bay is looking like they're going to be the one seed in the NFC, which holds a lot of value this year with not having two buys. It's a free week. It's a free win. So, and Aaron Rodgers, I feel like I haven't really been talking about him enough. So the MVP race is basically, at this point, going to be between Mahomes and Rodgers. It's a tough call. Rodgers, all of a sudden, whereas it seemed like he was slowly declining, now he said no to that. I mean, his touchdown to interception ratio is ridiculous. It's not like he ha- he he doesn't have as much, and I don't want to turn this into like a Mahomes versus Rodgers debate, but just for reference, like Devontae Adams is amazing. I think Devontae Adams is you could argue is the best receiver in football. It's debatable, of course. There's Hopkins, tons of other guys too, but he's amazing. But behind him, there's not a whole lot at all. And so I feel like, you know, there's no Travis Kelsey as a tight end. Uh, That's to take nothing away from Mahomes. But I think Rodgers has kind of flown a bit under the radar. He's been great. I think that this Packer team has, their defense isn't good enough. Like I don't, when it's all said and done, the NFC to me is extremely wide open. Could they get to the Super Bowl? Sure. Uh, but I think he's doing a lot. He's doing a lot, and he's going to do whatever he can to get them through. And certainly, going to Lambeau Field is never easy. Uh, just picturing some of these teams, I, I don't know what type of success they would have there. Like the Saints, for example, a tra- you know, a, a traditionally you know, a dome team. Drew Brees doesn't really do that well outdoors, especially like at that time of year. So... I, I definitely think that's a race to watch as far as are these games going to go, th- is home field advantage going to go through, you know, the Superdome in New Orleans or Lambeau Field in Green Bay? I, th- I think that's something to look at. And then also you have the interesting Ram seahawk race. Um, both teams will make the playoffs. It, like I've said, it's similar to, to to Titans-Colts. Only difference is, is that there's a lock that both will make it here, whereas in the AFC South, the loser is a, a little bit at risk. So... The Rams, with a very impressive performance on Thursday night against the Patriots, they're going to beat the Jets this week. And then it comes down to that Seahawk-Ram game at Seattle. The second to last week of the season, if the Rams win, then at that point, they will have actually clinched the division because they already beat the Seahawks. So, and then if Seattle wins, then it'll come down to week 17. So that'll be interesting to see. Of course, Arizona gets a big win against the Giants. And I think with the NFC teams, at least with the wild cards, we we pretty much know who the playoff teams are going to be in the NFC, except possibly the NFC East. You know, and that's maybe me just kind of being hopeful. I think Washington is looking honestly pretty good to be that team, but we can't say for sure. Whereas I don't see like who's going to catch Arizona. I am not seeing that team. Uh, really, the teams in that mix is like Chicago and Minnesota. And really, it's unlikely to happen. Arizona is better than those teams. Kyler Murray seems like he's more healthy now. I was impressed by what I saw this weekend. So, and Tampa Bay, they get a big win against Minnesota. Uh, that didn't really come too much of a surprise. Like the way that went down, Brady didn't look great. He honestly hasn't looked great for a while now, but Minnesota is a team I'm not really high on. Uh, Minnesota plays Chicago this week, and that's really a game where loser is done and winner is basically kind of holding on to a small hope with what will be two weeks to go. So we'll see. I, I think that in these NFC playoffs, anything is possible. I don't have a good feel for it. I think it's wide open. Who knows? Brady, maybe he pulls off some playoff magic. Maybe Kyler Murray, the either NFC West team. Hell, even the NFC East winner can win a few games. With the way Washington's defense is looking, they're going to be in each game they play. So, as it kind of always is in the NFC, it's like, who's going to play one of the powerhouse squads of the AFC, in this case, likely Kansas City. 
You know, Kansas City will be favored by a bit, you know, over whoever it is. But it's it's fun. When you get down to this and there's three weeks to go, it's definitely exciting. And I, I think, you know, finishing this off with the Giants here, it's going to be interesting to see how they respond for sure. And I hope they get the scoreboard results in terms of specifically Seattle beating Washington. That'll be really, really big. Because I want to go into the Sunday night game with some hope, with a feeling of like, this is like a huge game. I have to be honest, if Washington beats Seattle, sure, I'll be a little excited, but it's tempered. It is. Uh, we, we need help, unfortunately. We, ha- we control our own destiny and not anymore. So you hope that somehow there's a threat that Daniel Jones can run because that is so big for this offense. I cannot say it enough. And Jason Garrett, uh, he is not great at all. I would not mind if there's a different offensive coordinator next season. I was open to the idea, and at times he's done some creative things, but this is... Maybe he just knows that this offense is limited, and so how much can you kind of fault him? But they don't really take too many chances downfield. And that could just be because of the receivers. And some of the play calls, they had third and one. And so many times this year on third and short, we throw these one, you know, these sideline 50-50, maybe even less than 50-50 balls. And it's like, what just it's not smart. And we've been running effectively. Why not just go up the gut with Gallman? I'd rather go out that way than try to throw a 30-yard pass to Sterling Shepard that is unlikely to be converted. I understand, like, the thought process is, well, we're not really hitting on anything big. Here's our chance to kind of move it downfield. But just take care of the first down first and then move on. So I'm really – Jason Garrett, I, I think that – Time has kind of passed him by a little bit. I don't. I'd rather have more of a younger, innovative type of offensive mind for this team. And we'll see. It'll be interesting to see what this team does the last three games because I think we're at the point again now where everything's kind of on the on the table. I don't. As much as I think, if you had to ask me right now, I think Gettleman returns. Really though, if we play like we did against Arizona the last three weeks, why should that be? We were four and twelve last year, and now we're five and eleven. Okay, sure. Like Joe Judge did a really good job to do what he could with this roster, but why should Gettleman be locked into keeping his job? So this is, but this is what will be really critical down the stretch here because there's so many ranging factors. They could make this playoff push, or they could have one of the worst records in football, and and we're also unsure of the, you know whether Daniel Jones is the future of this team whether he's hurt or not look if he's out there you got to you the evaluations might be harsh but it's fair look you know like if he's not healthy enough to play don't play him i didn't think that personally if i knew he was going to be exactly like that i wouldn't have played him and they did and now the rest of the season you're going to have basically a 50 to 60% Daniel Jones not sure how effective that'll be. So hopefully next time this time next week we'll be talking about, you know, the Giants pulling things together with a big win against Cleveland and maybe being back in control of their own destiny. But I have my doubts. But I'm very excited to see what happens in these last three weeks of the season. We now have Saturday football this week, so a lot of things uh to be really pumped up about. And I'm looking forward to talking to you guys next week. <laughs>